let me talk about the notion of a course. As Dr. Rajaram correctly observed, a set of content, however interesting and useful, do not constitute a course. Meaning, it does not constitute a subject being taught by a teacher over a period of one year or one semester in the regular environment. So let us begin by understanding what does a conduct of a course consist of. So suppose I am a teacher, I will describe the way I have to teach a course actually. This is different from preparing for course, which is where I will prepare all my content, everything else. So when I teach a course for one semester, for example, the programming course that I teach conventionally, I know that during this semester every week I will have two or three lecture hours. I know that there will be two laboratory hours per week. I know that as per Senate requirement, I'm, uh, it is necessary for me to conduct at least two main evaluations, which is the mid-semester exam and end-semester exam. And additionally, I need to conduct the laboratory assessment and any other quizzes or uh, uh, tests that I can give. Unlike in the school education where uh, everything is quite formative, where you have, you have prescribed that you have to conduct your uh, uh, course like this. In IIT, we have a lot of leeways where an individual faculty member can decide the assessment pattern, decide how many tests he or she wants to conduct, etc. But whatever it is, the teacher has to decide all of these in advance. And the first day of the course, the entire charter of what will happen during that semester is declared to the students, including how many evaluations, how many will be considered for grade, at what stage, at, on what dates different evaluations will happen, etc., etc. Continuous assessment is an integral component of the entire activity during the course. And as I briefly mentioned in the morning, availability of content and easy access to good quality content is not actually learning. Learning happens in the course through the interaction between one student and other students and between students and teachers. And that interaction depends upon how active the students are in applying their mind, in problem solving, in thinking about the uh, concepts, in discussing those concepts, in articulating their doubts, etc. In short, if we want to offer a course using technology, it has to be much more than the collection of contents easily made accessible to people. That much I think is very clear. Now, so far what we have seen very briefly on the Open EDX platform or the Swam platform, let's keep calling it Swam platform now, although it is called IIT Bombay Test because it will be released as a Swam platform. So, in Swam platform, we briefly saw a studio portion where these courses are there, or perhaps you would have seen the EDX 101 demo course. Please understand that that demo course is primarily designed to tell you what different components can be there in the course. It is not a course. So it tells you, for example, that you can have text. It tells you that you can have video recorded lectures. It tells you that you can have a quiz. It tells you different types of quizzes that you can have. It generally tells you what all material in different forms can be made available by the course designer for the students of the course to eventually use. But Conducting a course is actually using that material by the students in a form in which our students do a regular learning in a semester long or a year long thing. Do you have a semester system or a year system? Yes. Yeah. So your course will start in June sometimes and will continue up to March. Okay, April. Oh, April to March. One full year. Yeah, yeah I know. This was introduced. When my younger son was in KV many years ago, the elder son did not have this. So uh, anyway, it is interesting life. Now, in a year, in general, if I understand correctly, you will have roughly so many lecture hours and for science subjects, so many either laboratory hours, experiments. You would have your own test pattern, whether they are monthly tests or quarterly tests or mid-semester tests or something and you will have examinations. And most of the examinations are written answers, which are to be evaluated by people. Marks are allocated like. During 
the entire offering of a course when the teacher gives lectures uh, teacher will ask some questions to the students students will ask some questions to the teachers hopefully after the lecture they are discussing among themselves some problems there will be some problem solving sessions there will be some practice problems that you would be giving to the students not all students will solve all practice problems and typically in the conventional course the only mechanism for you to know how well a student is doing is only when the student gets some marks in an exam there is no other way except you know occasionally through the interaction you know whether the fellow is answering questions correctly or not etc but i do not know what is your experience my experience has been that there will be a few students who will be very vociferous and very smart and they will occupy most of the interaction spectrum available in the class so if there are 50 students in a class then maybe about 10 to 12 students same 10 to 12 students in different circles will keep interacting will keep asking questions they are the more aggressive people whereas as teachers our job is to ensure that every student learns minimally something and it becomes very difficult to monitor every individual student so very often for us the class becomes a statistic 60 students out of which 10 students got first class 20 students got second class 10 students failed etc but for each one of them that person is a human being and it is our job to ensure that he or she learns in online courses while the number of students benefiting from online courses can be very large it is possible to pay attention to every individual student as well so let us first understand how a course on swayam will run let us take this example itself which is a particular course sequence week 1 number system the course content will be created which is not just the content for a course but a sequencing through as many weeks as long as the course will run week 1 week 2 week 3 week 4 week 5 the idea is to force a schedule similar to what students undergo that means that there will be an assessment at regular level typically it is not uncommon for online courses to have a weekly assessment so every week they are expected to complete certain portion and give an online assessment this online assessment will consist of a quiz module so five questions six questions these are all multiple choice questions in fact one of the limitations of online courses is that the majority of automatic testing is dependent on objective questions they cannot answer subjective questions easily so i had done a lot of analysis and i had found out what are the shortcomings of the conventional online courses one of which is this long answers which we want to prepare our students to be able to give articulate themselves etc cannot be automatically tested on these platforms so far okay there are efforts to do that i will describe them a little bit later but i had analyzed all the shortcomings of the massive open online courses in so far as engineering education is concerned i was invited to give a paper so i had conducted a study uh, what i asked my uh, team to do is uh, take a print out of that paper and circulate it to all participants now ignore for the moment that that paper talks about engineering education and think that it talks about school education you will find actually many of those observations there and suggestions made so like blended moocs etc may make eminent sense for this school education as well you just read through it i digress a bit but it is important to understand the limitation of online exams online courses also however there is a lot that can be done even on multiple choice quiz testing the trick is how do you set the quiz paper now that is something that we we have generally not done for automatic testing all our papers test papers etc are designed for manual evaluation for manual assessment and which means that we expect people to write answers which means that there are subjective evaluation that we do i do not know what is your experience as teachers in assessment in assessing the students mark but my experience as a teacher of engineering college and i have interacted with literally tens of thousands of teachers collected feedback from them is that our conventional assessment of paper based answers is quite imperfect there have been statistical studies which say that 
if I evaluate an essay from 50 students today and give some marks and do the same evaluation six months later, the marks could be significantly different. If I evaluate these essays in a good mood, the marks will be different. If I evaluate the essays after a big fight with my wife, the marks will be different. So these are human problems. Okay. Machine, unfortunately, does not have such problems. So if at all you can automate things, you can guarantee consistency of evaluation. It is important from the point of view of a student where student gets to know the assessment independent of personal biases. That is one advantage. But it is also not good enough because today the automatic evaluation is based only on these multiple choice things. Having said that, going back to how the courses are offered is when you create this kind of sequence, the creation of a course means defining the entire sequence or so a 10 week course. So you define week 1, what will happen, week 2, what will happen, week 3, what will happen, etc. Typically, a teacher prepare all of this before the course starts. So let's say in summer vacation, I'll prepare for the July semester course. When I prepare that course, I will know that over the next 14 weeks or 18 weeks or 22 weeks or whatever, these are going to be my lecture hours, these are going to be my lab hours, these are going to be my practice problems which I give, these are going to be my assessment. I will incorporate all of them in this sequence. On the top that you see, the strip that you see is actually different components of the course. So this is a, a, a component which is a video. This is a component which is another video. This is a component which is an exercise. This is a component which talks, it's a text material. This is a component which is another exercise. So you can give a lot of practice problems for people. As I mentioned, because the platform is automated, it is possible to know exactly in which order and at what point in time every student has clicked which part. It is not uncommon, for example, to have a student who directly jumps to the problem because he or she already knows the topic. It is not uncommon in engineering education on MOOCs to see students who do not see any videos at all. They just directly go to problem solving or quizzes. This is exactly equivalent to students who are very smart, but they bunk all the classes and appear only for the exams and still get good scores. One example is sitting amongst us here. Uh, our friend Professor Avinash Haute, who was also a national chess player, spent most of his time in playing chess when he was a student. But he still scored very high marks by appearing for exams. In fact, he is known uh, students used to go to him before the final exam, taking the class notes taken from their teachers. And he would read those notes and explain to those students what that teacher was trying to say. But he used his brain power for bunking lectures. There will be some students like that here also. For example, one of the statistical observations when you run these courses for lakhs of students has been that if your lecture videos are long, people do not watch them. The average watching time of a video is pegged as about six minutes, six to eight minutes. If you have a one hour video, it is watched for only five minutes. If you have an eight minute video, it is often watched for all eight minutes. And that is one of the reasons why it is suggested that the lectures should typically be uh, packaged into seven to eight minute lectures. Now, unfortunately, it is not possible always for us package a concept into 8 minutes because we have never done that in our life. Our lecture hour is 45 minutes or 50 minutes or whatever and we are mentally tuned to preparing a lecture like that and give it. Now whether it is a problem of our inability to package these concepts or it is a true problem that we are artificially trying to meet these 8 minutes deadline is not yet resolved. There are different opinions, different people provide different things etc. But Statistically, it is being shown that courses with shorter lecture videos, but many lectures, okay, are, con are finding favor with students in that they are watching more and their performance as judged through the, both the practice problems and the online quizzes is improving. And that's the only input that we have. Coming back to this course offering, when I offer an online course, the students are not physically visible to me. 
I have no personal interaction with them. So how do we run a course, online course like that? The process is very simple. I announce a course. I say this course will start, let's say, from 1st of January or 2nd of December or whatever. And I invite the global community to register or enroll for that course. In our case, it will be Indian students studying in those course, perhaps uh, suggested by the teachers like you in, in their school saying, OK, you should also take this course while you are studying physics from me. They will register for this course. The course will start. When the course starts, you, you as a teacher who is running that course, which is different, I may not be the person who designed that course by you. So Dr. Rajaram Sharma has designed one course. I have the responsibility of running that course. It is exactly similar to somebody has written a textbook. But I as a teacher in the school have responsibility of running that subject, physics, for that, those students. So here instead of a book, the whole course has been prepared by someone. I have the responsibility of running that course. Running that course means what? I actually start monitoring how these students are progressing. I have to do a lot of statistical analysis of what we call big data analytics because the number of clicks that these students will do are enormous. They cannot be manually monitored. Imagine one lakh students, each student during a week making at least 100 clicks at different places. Sometimes this video, sometimes that practice problem, practice problem one solved, practice problem two, quiz one solved, answer given, quiz two solved, second attempt made. We cannot manually analyze. So an independent body of experts is actually developing what we call uh, uh, analytics software, which will actually analyze these at least to conclude statistically about what is the behavior of students. Coming back to the running of the course, the typical sequencing that is encouraged for building a course for let's say one week is that an introductory video followed by some practice problem. And the practice problems have to be such that when the student answers that question, the student immediately gets a feedback whether the answer is correct or not. That facility is there in the platform. You can say that I'm giving five practice problems. You can even set options such that unless all five are submitted, don't display the answer. Or you can say after every attempt, display the answer. Or you can set a submission quiz which will be counted towards marks. Now that quiz can be opened at a certain point in time and closed at a certain point in time. For example, it is possible for you to have the week one sequence in which you have all of these and the last element which could be a subsection or a subunit in week one which could be made obvious. Oh, here it has not been made but we, if you see some other course you can do that. You can expand on week one and see various components. Suppose you say a weekly quiz. Now the course designer who knows exactly the sequence in which uh, the course will be taught, he knows that week one, okay, the quiz should be attempted. Let us say we decide that during the week we expect students to look at this. On Saturday morning, we'll make the quiz accessible to all students. And the students have to finish that quiz by Sunday midnight. Please remember, we are not talking about a major test where the student is sitting in a classroom and giving the test for one hour. So it's a long duration which is given to the students. These timings can be set by the person who is conducting the course. So if I am conducting this course, I can say, quiz for week one will be released on this Friday. I have to give a date and time. And it will be open up to this date, Sunday midnight or whatever. Once those dates are fixed by you, then any student across will not be able to see that quiz before that start time and will not be able to respond to that quiz after the end of it. That is exactly like forcing a sequence of action. Okay. So you cannot give the quiz of week one in second or third week. You have to give it in the first week at the design. Generally, it is possible that some students, for example, if somebody is ill, now what do we do if somebody is ill? We say there is a makeup test. Or there is a special test. The equivalent for EDX course conduct is that we say that totally there will be, let's say, uh, 24 or uh, 40 weeks are there. Then out of the 40 weeks, I will conduct 40 weekly tests. But I will take the score of best 30. Now, best 30 means if I attend all 40, the best uh, top 30 answer, uh, scores. If I miss some, 
then I'll get zero in that anyway. So, but still I get the best that is. This is one way of augmenting. The teacher who is conducting the course at any point in time can introduce an additional quiz, which he or she may call a makeup quiz. And the people will be permitted to take that. You can announce start date, end date for such things also. How do you communicate with students? There are two or three things, mechanisms. The first and important mechanism is a teacher who is conducting a course can send an email to all students of the course. That email will go to each and every participant. Second, there is a discussion forum. The discussion forum is very much like a classroom where anybody can ask a question and anybody can answer. Now, these discussion forums will require some getting used to. We ourselves who have used discussion forum in IIT for many years were quite stumped when we started running our courses for 20,000 and 60,000 students, the number of questions that people raise here, etc., etc. So, what we need for running a course, for example, depending on the number of students, we need a team of people to run a course. A online course is never run by just one person. Like I may run a single course in a class, in an institution. Typically, we have found two to three teachers and six to eight teaching assistants. Now, in IIT system, we get teaching assistants who are our own MTech students or PhD students. In case of schools, we'll have to designate one or two senior and more experienced teachers and maybe six or eight other teachers who know that subject and who can answer queries which are raised by students on the discussion forum, but who are well trained on how to run that course. So it's a team which is running the course. But please understand the difference. If one teacher can teach 50 students an entire course, it's typically what, 50 or 60, what is the class strength? 40. Okay, 40 students. Now, one subject, you have one teacher teaching that subject for 40 students. How many teachers you would require to teach 400 students? 10. How many you will require to teach 4,000 students? 100. How many of you will require to teach 4 lakh students? 100 into 100. Our contention is to teach 10,000 students, you do not require more than 4 or 5 teachers. And that is because the number of doubts which students raise do not increase in the same linear proportion as the number of students. We take fact of this advantage. Second, the discussion forum is very much different from the discussion that we have here because many times one student raises a question and another student answers it. That is where you require monitoring of that discussion forum which Professor Gaitonde will discuss later. But that is a mechanism that is available and that is always working in the background. Incidentally, there have been interesting cases that you declare a quiz uh, which is open, let's say, for three days or four days. And after first day, in the discussion forum, answers to quiz start appearing. So the other people, the smart people simply wait for some time. They look at the discussion forum and then give the correct answer. Right. So for that, there are possibilities in the platform where you can say that, let's say, Saturday and Sunday is the quiz time. Then when the quiz is declared, you can close discussion forum for new entries. And the discussion forum can be reopened after the quiz closes. So these features are, I mean, some mechanisms to sort of control something. Of course, there are people in the global community who set up private communities on Google Hangouts. And there have been instances where a course is going on, the teacher has stopped the discussion forum, but on the Google community, there are answers that are being uploaded which people can see. Now, there will always be crazy people like that, but by and large, and this is very important and interesting, by and large, it is observed that people attempt things themselves because the desire is to learn something. So, to consolidate whatever we have seen so far, a course is much more than just the content. As Dr. Rajaram correctly said, there is a glue which actually binds components and there is a sequence which binds all of these together. And this sequence involves not just throwing contents at students, but students doing something, we observing what they are doing, 
our ability to intervene by injecting an additional practice problem or an additional explanation mean it has happened in our cs 101 because we run it in a flipped classroom where students will study those videos there and come to the classroom in the classroom we have these recap questions and practice problems and we when we found that in certain weeks the students were uniformly unable to solve some practice problems we realized that they had not understood the concepts we revisited our videos we talked to some students and we found out that students were not understanding them. so we immediately recorded an additional explanatory lecture and inserted it in that week so that explanatory video it is like conducting an extra lecture 50 logon ko samajh mein nahi aaya koi subject to sunday ko bula ke chalo extra lecture dete us type ka kar sakte and you can include that in the course that you are conducting so all these facilities exist and therefore you can actually very well design and conduct a complete course from start to finish the only thing is online examinations are multiple choice answers there are attempts made to grade what we call uh, 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 subjective responses or essays there are efforts going on on artificial intelligence uh, software which will automatically grade a text essay also for a particular domain another mechanism that this particular platform provides is called a peer evaluation now this is something that we don't attempt because in a class of 50 students as a teacher i am capable or i am required to evaluate all 50 essays but imagine if these 50 essays are distributed to the same 50 students or we may make group that these five students will examine essays submitted by the same five students so i circulate that means my essay is evaluated by five of my peers and the average grade is taken as my grade now this kind of peer evaluation where a teacher can say so many peers must evaluate every answer and that answer grading will be taken as your grade for that submission now this has never been experimented in conventional education we have tried some such thing self evaluation and peer review mechanism in some of our courses in iit and let me tell you that our experience is that it works very well given responsibility to the students by and large they live up to that responsibility has been our uniform experience okay but we have never tried it in school education perhaps it is time we can try in the blended mode that we are going to make this platform uh, available for such education if i am a teacher in jarsuguda let us say and rajaram has designed a course in delhi i can adapt that course and I can create a Jarsuguda version of that course. It can either run on the same platform or it can run on my server in Jarsuguda if I have a rich enough school to run that. Now when the Jarsuguda version runs, my students in Jarsuguda are registered for that Rajaram's course, but they get access only to the Jarsuguda portion. Now in that Jarsuguda portion, we will make functionality available in which as a teacher at Jarsuguda, I can actually add more explanatory contents, additional problems, different problems which are locally relevant. Okay. I can give, suppose the original course is available only in English and maybe in Hindi. And suppose the local population speaks Oriya or Bengali or something. I can make additional translations available in my course. Suppose the original course by Dr. Rajaram while it explains something because that also is a group of teachers experts who have framed it but i notice that my students perhaps because of their lack of their clear background or something are finding some concept difficult to understand i can always add my own local flavor of explanation and add it there in short we are looking eventually at an indian platform swayam which will permit both the usage of the best quality material that has been created by a team and additionally the innovation that i would like to introduce in my own class here even otherwise even if i don't do any innovation i can do a lot for my students by observing which of those 45 students are getting what kind of scores in what courses and paying attention to individuals so this could be a great complement to begin with for the conventional education and of course, there are a large number of students who cannot attend classes, who cannot attend courses. I do not know, but some of you would be familiar with the situation where 
actually your students have to work with their parents in khet and everywhere in that during the day time they cannot afford to come to your school at all and yet they are smart enough they want to learn if you provide an online mechanism they could probably learn at their available time and you can help them through the discussion forums this is going to be a long term advantage in short then please understand that creating a designing a course is one thing that is the main activity that you will be doing but please keep in mind that when you design a course this should be run in one of the two possible fashions one as a general online course which is what will happen in the first instance and second possibly starting from next year it will run in a blended mode where local teachers like you will be able to innovate add etc a third component is when local innovation from jarsuguda from uh, uti from uh, khargon from wherever such thing comes there should be a global mechanism to say oh this particular explanation by the teacher in khargon is very good or that particular quiz problem set by that teacher in jarsuguda is very useful there has to be a mechanism by which you collect all of that and enrich the main course so that the next offering that course is a better course and of course the greater challenge of translating all of the courses in multiple indian native languages initially the decision is that the courses that we offer will be made available in english and hindi and that is the reason that this group has been carefully chosen which can together create and design courses in english and hindi but you would agree as avinash out has said and as all of you know there are several nine standard students in the country who understand neither english nor hindi and they study in their own language and they deserve to get the same best quality education so there will be a massive effort required to translate all these courses At the last day my colleague professor kannan mahudgalya is going to be the chief guest for the validity function i requested him to tell you about this spoken tutorial initiative we are trying to see whether this spoken tutorial kind of lecture videos where the person does not appear at all if some of you have seen khan academy lectures you will notice khan is not there but something is being written and something is being spoken and that is quite adequate for people to learn the spoken tutorials actually is that methodology hundreds of tutorials have been created in multiple languages and people are using them all across the country primarily for learning open source software usage but the same technique can be used for school education we are already adopting that approach for some of our engineering courses in design so you might want to consider uh, this is exactly what i wanted to tell you about running a course at the end of course you conduct a final exam it is customary at the global level by the way to give 3 to 4 days to 1 week for a quiz to be answered the assumption is that the reason i am not able to go to a class and study is i don't have time so i must be given ample period of time so someone may solve the problem on monday somebody may look at the quiz on tuesday somebody may look at few problems on monday and then come back only on thursday all those online facilities because the platforms are designed for online activity but if we want to use them for our school students then what kind of discipline we need to impose what kind of timings we need to give our decisions which we will have to take my suggestion is when you design the courses design the courses with certain assumptions but state those in a separate document frankly we the higher education people are ahead of you the school education people by exactly 6 months nothing more than that the whole of massive open online courses all the concept is not new online education has been there for quite some time flip classroom has been there for quite some time active learning has been there for quite some time the entire gamut of massive open online courses is less than 3 years old when we started negotiating with these companies all the three major companies in the world were to celebrate their first year's anniversary when we joined the edx consortium they were in the second year now that we have offered courses on the global community we are 6 month better educated than all of you there has been a similar attempt by nptel for example they have offered some moocs 
There have been similar attempts in QEEE platform where they have offered MOOCs. NASCOM has offered some MOOCs. But the number of students who have participated is very less. So it is very difficult to draw a statistical conclusion from that effort. Yours will be the first effort in the school. We do not know how much 9th and 10th standard, 9th standard students will benefit because we are starting somewhere now. Here is a humble suggestion that while you design the courses, if you concentrate, you know exactly which part of the year which portion is covered. Is there a sequence of some kind? In which case, it would be very nice if you concentrate on designing those topics which are meaningful in December, January, February, March. Yeah, so you, it is not necessary to run a full science course. You can run a part course, okay, called science part 3 or science part 4, whatever. But if you can do it such that whenever the platform is launched and those students who are able to access that can immediately start benefiting. That is one suggestion. I would leave it to Dr. Rajaram and all of you to decide. Eventually, we have to complete the entire course. But sequencing your efforts, because after going back, I hope that you will continue these efforts. In which case, it is better to first take that portion which will be immediately meaningful and then complete the remaining portion as well. Please note that the course creation or course design is such an important activity that once you design it, it should be usable, two, three, four offerings by lakhs and crores of students. That is the eye. Any questions on this? What are the requirements to start this course by our school? For running, for example, my school in Jarsuguda has to run this course. First of all, my students must have access to internet. That means there should be either conventional PCs with a local area network, Okay, or alternately students should have access through cyber or tablets or something. We have still not confirmed that Parag is not here. I forgot to ask Parag in the morning. We are experimenting with Akash tablets on Wi-Fi. So Akash tablets connected on Wi-Fi, whether you are able to see from a student point of view the entire course or not, that is being concluded. It can be done. So theoretically it is solved, practically also it is solved. But if there are 50 students, now what happens is not known. The only experiment where 50 students have actually accessed some contents on the server, not the MOOC course, because there was no MOOC course when we started the school pilot. In Pandarpur, under the aegis of Department of Atomic Energy Commission, four schools have been chosen, where very high-end Wi-Fi has been created in each school. And all these four schools are connected with fiber to a local engineering college, which is a remote center for our T10KT program. There, the students are able to actually access contents in the classroom using their Akash tablets. We will be working at IIT Bombay for, forget the Akash tablets, but any tablets which will now come, say future versions of Akash or something, to provide a low-cost, workable, affordable solution for schools where all the children have these tablets and they access these course through local Wi-Fi connections which are provided, which are connected to the National Knowledge Network Fiber. So for connectivity, I do not know how many of you are aware, but the country has plans to connect to one lakh panchayats in the country, a fiber connection. A fiber means practically unlimited bandwidth in theory. In practice, the networking equipment will decide what bandwidth you will get. One important decision which I believe that the new government has taken is to ensure that when the connection goes to a panchayat, it also goes to at least one school and one hospital. That makes sense, no? I mean, the network is not only for politicians, it is for students and for uh, citizens. Yeah. So, if that happens, at least 100,000 schools will have high connectivity soon. Yet, the local infrastructure will be required. Fortunately, since it runs on internet, you do not require any server. The server is the main, what we call the cloud server. Currently, we are setting up a pilot cloud here. The national mission will be setting up a larger cloud in Delhi. 
we have recommended that ncrt should set up its own large cloud for handling this school and uh, all these things should happen as months pass but i can tell you one thing from the observation that i have over the last 4 months of the speed of this government it will not take a decade for these things to happen it may happen in next two years or one year you agree it appears to be like so with that uh, preparation so that is the what you require is this sir suppose if we start to this course in the, our school website for example ha so for this basis no 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 the the course remains on the cloud so you want suppose you design a course here and you say that i want my students in my school to access this course you have to just tell us that this be made available on internet and you as a teacher will be able to make changes to that course that you have designed from wherever you are is all web based interface so physical nearness of a server is completely eliminated server can be anywhere teacher can be anywhere and students can be anywhere yeah yeah sir my query is regarding the certificate that you provide the certificate for the certificate for the course okay so as i mentioned in the morning if a student takes a course completely online with no supervision whatsoever then the student will be entitled to get one of the two kinds of certificate one is called audit certificate in which case the student need not give any exam online also the second is called honor course certificate where the student gives online exams so it will be provided by the will be no no will not be provided by iit bombay in case of the uh, higher education thing such certification is provided by the university which runs or designs the course for example cs 101 and me 209 the courses which are run by iit bombay iit bombay will provide that certificate some course is given by jnu then jnu will provide that certificate the courses are not called conventional courses for example cs101 is the course name for computer programming now that course although exactly identical course is offered its number is cs101x for the global consortium because our senate might tomorrow object saying how can you give cs101 to others but cs101x is extended course for swayam we are going to name all the courses with cs 101 s for example so it's a swayam course but iit bombay offering a swayam course jnu offering a swayam course in the case of school we have no clarity but it is my understanding that initially the cbse or ncrt uh, somebody can nominate that this is the agency under the aegis of which certificates will be given eventually these could be local school boards eventually it could be even jila parishad i mean depends on who offers that course so it is exactly like the separation between who has written the textbook and who gives marks in the school so nine standard marks in let's say my central school are given by my local teachers school only school only nine standard marks in your school will be given by you only we can have exactly the same thing that the marks are recognized so suppose you you say all right we will take these marks but what you will say all the students who are doing these moocs please don't give quizzes at home come here on sunday or saturday evening and give quizzes i supervise that quiz so you are giving the quiz between one hour and you can say that please open the quiz at 4 pm close the quiz at 5 pm we have done that in our blended moocs when cs101 students take the quiz the quiz starts at 8 o'clock in the morning ends at 8:20 after 8:20 nobody can give it before 8 nobody can give it 20 minutes they give that now way if i supervise for those 20 minutes that they are not talking to each other or something is like supervising an exam then i as a teacher can certify that all online exams have been properly given by the student and the marks the students have scored are the marks for that the schools will have to adopt this now i do not know what is the equivalent of university system adopting the grades and school adopting moocs marks that's a policy issue that will have to be debated later frankly today whatever happens happens in the form of two three different ways in which happens huh. as a private school for instance ha huh. then all functionally there is an anarchy prevailing there or there is a democracy prevailing 
national level Right. In fact, uh, it is not very much dissimilar from what prevails in the IIT system. The IIT system, Senate only approves a course, the structure and the total credits. But every teacher who teaches the course is completely free to decide what should be the evaluation. And the grade that I gave is the final grade. Now, it appears to me that close to similar autonomy exists hmm. for at least many school teachers for those subjects. That could be exploited. Yes, but in this context, I don't believe this is uh, so much of a technology question, yeah, yeah. but it's more of a management. Management question. and so policy. So suppose, Correct. suppose I pick up a topic like optics, huh. and I have, uh, let us say, some five thousand different versions of courses on that. Right. Doesn't really make sense. Correct. Correct. Okay. Correct. Correct. But nevertheless, huh. a big crowd of people right. involved in the process of constantly refining this course and right. making right. 10 versions of some good courses right, right. and making that available in multiple languages, right. I think should be the objective. Correct. Correct. Which necessarily brings in the mm. fact that an individual teacher can launch a course Correct. as being the pioneer in that uh, direction. Right. But there is a review process that will naturally set in, hmm. which the uh, national repository can uh, always yeah. mediate. Uh, in, in the higher education, the learning so far and the wisdom that has emerged is as follows. It is not any teacher who generally can create a course and offer a course. So, these creation of the course and offering of a course is often by invitation, by the consortium. And there are three key principles that we use in higher education. You might want to consider that. Number one, the course must be beneficial to the largest number of students. That is automatically correct for the school. Number two, the best and most recognized teachers in that subject should be involved in designing that course. Now, that is much easier in a university system where the top, you know, for example, Berkeley, a well-known name like Umesh Wazirani on quantum computing. And there are hardly five such people in the world. Or if Finman's lecture, even today we listen to them. Such people are available, we get the courses designed by them and made them available and accessible. In school education, I do not know what is the mechanism available for us to identify who are the best teachers. It is possible that somebody teaches a particular topic better than any other team. So, what should be the team that we should form? In our own wisdom, by the way, we have collected these people here who are presumably amongst the best. Now, don't ask me how this filtering was done because you don't select best by uh, doing a tender processing and finding out the <laughs> minimum costing. <laughs> you know, it has to be done very discreetly. Such mechanisms may prevail. That is the current view. All right. I'll close this discussion.